Hey everybody, Joey Savage, and on this episode of The Supplement Lab, we're going to talk a little bit about protein and amino acids, why we take them, and why they're good for you. Talking about Xeno on this episode of The Supplement Lab. Now, protein is actually one of the oldest types of dietary supplements known to existence because people would drink them. They were usually made out of whey or maybe even straight up milk in order to increase your recovery and help build more muscle tissue. And we're doing this because what does not kill you in the gym will ultimately make you stronger as long as you drink your protein. So how does it get there? It's based off of this old alchemical principle of solve coagula, which roughly translates to dissolve and reconstitute, which is exactly what we do when we ingest protein. Now, the stomach is actually the epicenter of all this metabolism because it contains peptidase and protease enzymes that are capable of catalyzing the hydrolysis reactions of breaking the amino acid to amino acid bonds inside of actual proteins. However, there is also a significant amount of absorption of, of smaller peptides and amino acids that occurs inside the stomach and in the duodenum that actually gets into circulation. In addition to that, there's also amino acid absorption that occurs at the small intestinal brush border. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, what does this all mean? Where is it all going and what's it gonna do? We come to this beautiful concept over here on my right called the central dogma of biology. Now the reason why we use amino acids is because there's certain processes going on inside our bodies all the time and cell replication is one of those. But it all starts with DNA. Now DNA is something that when it undergoes mitosis will replicate itself. But when it's not doing that, it'll also unravel and just be all kinds of relaxed and then it can get transcribed by RNA to form a template transcript. Now, DNA is made up of four different nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, but there's an exception on RNA because uracil is something that will replace the thymine that we find in DNA. So this is something that transcribes the original template of the DNA and it will get translated into what are called proteins and that's gonna occur over here. So basically to get you familiar with this DNA, it replicates, it transcribes into RNA and that RNA will be or translated into actual protein. And this occurs outside of the cell nucleus while the DNA is kept inside. This messenger RNA will come out. It will come into contact with this little dude called the ribosome, which is actually my favorite part of the cell. And it will actually make protein itself. It comes into contact with another form of RNA called the transfer RNA. But transfer RNAs have these little red hitchhikers that I've marked up here. And those are the actual amino acids. So what happens is the ribosome will actually read this messenger RNA strand three letters at a time. These three letters are called codons. They correspond to an anticodon that's found on the tRNA, which correlates to a specific amino acid. So these three letter segments will correspond to each different amino acid. They will get put together in a chain. This chain is called the polypeptide. This is the primary structure of a protein. However, it will undergo some folding and twisting and all kinds of other fun stuff based off its structure and some enzyme catalysis to form a secondary structure, usually a coil or some sort of a folded sheet. And then those will get complex. Maybe you get two copies and stick them together. Maybe you got three, stick those together or four and stick those together and that is called the tertiary complex. This is the final form of protein when it's all finished and gets shipped off to wherever it needs to go. Now, we're talking about specifically skeletal muscle protein. That's what we came here for and that's what we're concerned about. So let's talk about MyoSeq. Now, MyoSeq is born out of necessity because in our history, there were commercially available amino acid tablets, which were pretty much just like hydrolyzed leftover agricultural parts, if you know what I'm saying and you would take those in tablet form, break them down, absorb them, and make new tissue. But this wasn't exactly smart. These were random amino acids that were kind of thrown at your body. Then, in the next generation, we came across branch chain amino acids. Now, we knew that these were important because the body couldn't synthesize them, but they were also involved in a lot of protein folding and stuff because they're technically kind of hydrophobic and they don't want to be around a lot of water like the rest of the amino acids kind of do. So they were essential. They composed a significant amount of actual muscle tissue, so we started supplementing with those. And then, then we found out that it's not just three amino acids, the branch chains that are essential, there's actually nine amino acids that are essential. So these nine amino acids are things that can't be made by the body, and we have to take them in an exogenous supplement form in order to create more tissue. And I said, okay, we had three, we had nine, 
why don't we just make it specific to skeletal muscle? I mean, MyoSeq is something you're not gonna find in just any other product because it's something that we came up with on our own. So if you really consider that skeletal muscle is made out of thousands of proteins, and those proteins are made out of hundreds if not thousands of amino acids long. So you, if you actually calculate and you take the main structural components of a sarcomere or a myotubule or, or a myofibril, you'll find out that the main structural components are things like actin and myosin, and those things are involved in different ratios, and they have particular amino acid sequences based off of their relative abundance. Now, if you apply that math to the actual ratios of those proteins are there and then the actual ratios of amino acids within those ratios of those different proteins you can get a general idea of what your muscles actually need in order to repair themselves more effectively so that's what we've done here with myoseq we've basically listened to what the body actually wants and we're delivering in a supply and demand type fashion to give the body what it needs to recover faster so we, we tallied all this up, we've created this, this sequence that's based off of the percent abundance of the naturally occurring amino acids in structural components of skeletal muscle tissue, but this is imperfect. You know, this is the first round, it's only structural components. MyoSeq2 will actually have more stuff in it where we'll start taking into account the different enzymes that catalyze the production of these. Maybe we'll end up accounting for the different ribosomal subunits and stuff that actually are involved at this point that actually give you more ribosomes. But for the first time around, we're going with the structural stuff, the actin, the myosin, and I would have sequenced collagen, but Jesus Christ, that's thousands of amino acids long and I ain't got time for that, plus collagen is available already in a powdered form. It's gonna do a couple of different things. It's gonna provide support to your actual joint tissue, um, and it can actually have an anti-catabolic effect because the small chunks of collagen that get floating around in your blood can provide a negative feedback loop on actual collagen damage, so that's kind of cool. But in addition to that, it's there to help myofascial tissue, it's there to help joints and ligaments and tendons, and that's also why hyaluronic acid is in there. The other cool thing about hyaluronic acid is it's something that drags a whole lot of water with it. And the complexes that form at the ends of the muscles where the actual collagen and the actual hyaluronic acid like to hang out, they have a specific role in helping your muscles slide around your bones and making that whole process a whole lot easier. For you ladies out there, having collagen and hyaluronic acid in a product like this is great because it's gonna help your skin stay nice and hydrated, right? So in addition to that, in addition to the hydration principle, we've included taurine and some extra electrolytes, you know, because we like keeping that good osmolytic balance and keeping your cells happy and hydrated. But in addition to that, we've also got astrogen. And I know a lot of you people out there are fans of astrogen. I'm a fan of astrogen too, why? Because of the intestinal brush border, it can increase amino acid absorption anywhere from 25 to 67% based off of what amino acids you're actually talking about. So in summary, We've got a muscle specific amino acid sequence here. This is actually stuff that is designed for hungry muscles in order to create better muscles in the long run. In addition to that, we've got some myofascial and some joint support that helps keep everything lubricated because you do damage those too while you work out. And in addition, we've got some hydration components to keep you from cramping. And in case you sweat too much, we've got some electrolyte replenishment in there. So I love this product. Having designed this, it's really cool. Um, also, there's one thing I want to note before I leave this video, keep you prisoner. These things, yeah, they're kind of cool, but I've got a video down in the description. You can get this on Instagram and on YouTube. Good, because Harvard BioVisions has done an incredible job explaining this kind of machinery, making a 3D kind of animation and showing it to you in as close to real time as it possibly can. If you want to get your mind blown, Watch this video and it will explain everything I've just said in another way. We'll see you next time on the Supplement Lab.